Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I've done several videos on the AC500 now, and the most recent one I think that I did was probably two and a half, maybe three months ago, where I talked about how to get three, three times faster charging than the standard 120 volt, 15 amp charging that you get uh, from a standard wall outlet, where you can actually use something like a 1450 receptacle to output 240 volts, 50 amps, and get 50 amps charging on this thing. And the reason why you'd want to do that, if you haven't seen that video, is because if you have two or more of these B300Ss, it can take a very long time to recharge this thing uh, with that much battery capacity. Because this thing will take up to six of these B300S batteries. Each AC500 can handle up to six of these. So 50 amp charging is a very attractive option to pursue if in fact you're gonna have two or more of these B300Ss. All right, now that said, in that video, I mentioned that I was probably gonna be using that uh, 1450 uh, 50 amp receptacle that I, that I used to charge this, I'm going to be using it also for EV charging. Uh, my wife and I at the time did not have an EV, but we were anticipating maybe get, getting one uh, later this year. Well, we've actually done that. I'll put a picture of this thing up here. It's a 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E. And so now we are level two charging at home with our 50 amp charger. And it is very fun, very cool. I'm probably gonna do some more content on that probably on a new channel, which I will announce later on. But getting back to this AC500, there are gonna be times when you wanna output more than 120 volts at 50 amps. Maybe you wanna be able to put output 240 volts. Maybe you've got an EV that you'd like to be able to charge maybe in a pinch if there's a power outage and you're thinking about building an actual home power backup solution. Well, 240 volts actually becomes not only a viable option, but maybe something you really seriously want to consider. So that's the purpose of today's video is to show you how you can set up 240 volt split phase configuration. And to do that, you need two AC 500s to do that. And then you need a communications cable. And then you obviously need a way to output that 240 volt 50 amp power. And we're gonna take a look at all that, how you set all that up. And in the context of a home backup power solution, you also would probably want to use their home integration kit, which is this guy right here. And uh, I'm actually gonna bring you in closer for a look at this so I can kind of describe what's going on here. So the home integration kit for the AC500 is a little bit different than the home integration kit with the AC300. This one is designed specifically for 50 amps. And it, depending on which version of this you get, you get the same box, but you can order it for a 120 volt configuration, which is a single AC500, or you can order it with a uh, a 240 volt version, which comes with a different set of cables that is assuming you're going to use it in a 240 volt split phase configuration with two AC 500s. But you'll notice inside here, this looks quite a bit different than the other 10 circuit manual transfer switch that I had that was a 30 amp version. And that was the one that you would get if you ordered the integration kit for the AC 300. With the AC 500, you want something that can handle 50 amps. And so what you do is you basically map your critical circuits over to these individual uh, circuit breaker bays. And then you have one breaker here at the top that switches the entire set over from grid power to generator power. And the generator connector is, under, is here on the bottom left-hand side. There's a little uh, dust covered door on the bottom. And then over here, it's also got another outlet box that it comes with. And this can be wired significantly further away if you want. I don't need it to be further away, but this is a uh, 1450 uh, receptacle and the outlet box that goes with it. This is what you output power from. I only have a 50 amp circuit wired right here um, and the 30 amp circuit is not currently connected to anything. So that's just a future expansion that I'm going to do. So I don't actually have this particular panel patched into my grid power. It is only patched, gonna be patched in to the AC500. So let's take a look at how all that works. Now, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, the specific cables that come with the home integration kit are gonna vary depending on whether you get the 120 volt version or whether you get the 240 volt version. Now, if you get the 240 volt version of the home integration kit, you get a communications cable, which you need to actually connect both AC 500s together so that they can communicate and create that split phase output. You will also get the, uh, this monster connector here, this big 50 amp cable, this is what plugs into the bottom of that uh, Reliance box over there on the bottom uh, left-hand corner flap that I showed you. And then you've got these uh, 1450 plugs right here that go into each one each of the AC500s. 
And you'll also get an AC charging cable that connects to both units at the same time and allows you to charge at 240 volts. It's actually doing 120 to each unit, but each on a different phase. And you need that cable because when these units are connected in split phase configuration, you can't charge them individually off of the same phase. They have to be charged off of different phases. Now you can use the 15 amp 120 volt cable, AC charging cable that these units come with, but only if you are able to plug them into uh, outlets that are on separate phases in your power supply. And that's probably not likely, it's, it is possible, but it's probably not gonna be very convenient. So much more convenient to just use the 240 volt AC charging cable. All right, let's go ahead and connect this up because there's some uh, configuration that we have to do in addition to cable connections. We have to set some menu settings to make all of this work properly. And then once we get all this set up, we're gonna see if we can actually charge the new EV with this split phase 240 volt AC 500 setup. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is turn these units off and then we're going to connect the communications cable. Now the communications cable connection is uh, I believe here on the bottom and there is a key. So the wide slot goes on the top and you wanna make sure you tighten that down nice and securely. And we're gonna connect it to the other unit. All right, I've got the communications cable connected. I can go ahead and turn these on all right, let's go ahead and set up this unit. I believe this is probably gonna be the slave unit, but we'll see. Let me go ahead and go into settings here and click next. You'll see machine type says single phase. So I will select that. And now I have the option of going to split phase. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, set that to slave. And at the same time, I'm gonna move you over to the other unit. I apologize for the screen glare, but we're gonna go in here, do the same thing, machine type, Set this to split phase master, and we'll hear the alarm clear in just a minute once they sync up. All right, now that we got the software configuration set up and these things are actually synced up for split phase configuration, what's really happening here is that these three big ports here, especially this guy here, which is a, a 30 amp 240 volt port, and then a 50 amp 240 volt port, these are actually only outputting on one of the two 120 volt legs. So this would be like L1, and then this over here will be L2, just supplying that, that uh, power in the opposite phase on the other leg of 120 volts. And that basically gives you the same kind of 240 volt power that you would have powering your central air conditioning, or your oven, or your uh, electric dryer, or maybe your hot water heater for that matter. Oh, that's redundant. Your water, I know somebody's gonna comment on that. Your, your electric water heater, which is gonna be 240 volt. All right, so what we're gonna do is take this cable, we're gonna plug one of these 1450 connectors into each of these AC 500s. Doesn't really matter which one, because they're on split phase, or on opposite phases anyway. So it doesn't really matter which one. And then this part, this big plug here, is gonna go down here on the bottom side of this manual transfer switch from the home integration kit. So let me go ahead and plug those in and get that started. All right, and this guy gets plugged into this port under here. This is actually a twist lock connector. So once you twist it, it can't accidentally pop out on you, which is good because this cable is very heavy. All right, now to energize this, you've got utility supply on this side and you have got uh, generator supply on the other side. So this is kind of like an interlock switch. It can't be on both at the same time because you don't want to be back feeding the grid with generator power. So that's kind of a no-no. It's more than kind of a no-no. It's an absolute no-no. So we definitely don't want to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is I got to make sure that my 50 amp circuit is turned on and then I'm going to set my interlock up here. So we are now on generator power. So all I have to do since one of these is a master and one is a slave, to turn on the AC power output, I, I, instead of having to do it in both places, since they're connected via the communications cable, I can activate the AC output from just the master, which is this one on the left. So if I turn that on and say on, you'll notice that it'll pop on over here as well. I'm not gonna do it there, it just came on. And you can see that little AC load light is now illuminated. So that means, that this receptacle right here, this 1450 uh, outlet 
is actually now should be live. So now we're gonna take this mobile charging box, and by the way, this only charges at a maximum of 30 amps. So uh, it is not at all gonna exceed the 50 amp output that we can get out of this unit. But we're gonna find out if I can actually charge my EV charger with this guy. Now there is a trick to this. These smart chargers for, for EVs actually require a neutral ground bond in the circuit. Now in your home, there is a neutral ground bond usually on the main panel. And if you have a sub panel, there is no second neutral ground bond. There should only be one neutral ground bond in your system. So if you have wired this into grid power and you are actually powering off the grid, it will already have a neutral ground bond. Now, since I am not connected to my grid power, I don't have a neutral ground bond. And if I, if I don't do something to remedy that, this is not gonna work. I'm gonna get a red light on this and it's gonna tell me, uh -uh, I can't charge with this, something is wrong. So what I did was I actually did a neutral ground bond directly inside the panel. So I just created a jumper uh, from the neutral side over to the ground bus bar in, inside the panel to create that single uh, ground neutral bond. And that should allow this thing to work. So we're gonna test it right now and find out. So first of all, let me go ahead and plug this into the receptacle. And I'm getting the blue indicator light, which is a good sign. So now let's go plug the other end into the EV and see if we're able to charge. All right, it's negotiating with the car and the blue flashing breathing light there tells me that we are charging. All right, now let's take a look over here and we can see that we are charging at 3746 so a little over 3700 watts on one unit and should be the same on the other unit so we are getting a grand total of about 7200 watts of charging out of this now why that might be attractive if you have an EV and you want to be able to charge on backup power is because if you're only charging an EV, which it has the capability of doing on a standard 15 amp, 120 volt circuit, you're gonna get about four miles of range per hour. That's it. So it's gonna take you, even overnight, you're only gonna get about 25, maybe 30 miles of range, depending on how long you have it plugged in. And that is not a whole lot. Whereas this is going to allow me to get charged at a rate of about 24 miles per hour which is a whole lot more practical, especially in a pinch where I need to get this thing charged up so I can make a run. If there's a grid down situation for multiple days, I can be recharging these via solar and then uh, be actually sending that power to the EV when I need it in a emergency backup situation. All right, so hopefully if you are wondering how all that works, now you have a general idea of how that works. And by the way, if you have any questions about this kind of setup that I didn't answer previously in the video, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to try to answer this for you. Now I know an EV charging with a power station or home backup system is not probably the most common scenario, but I just wanted to show you that it is absolutely possible to do it. And it's probably more likely that you're gonna be using these to power water heaters, uh, dryers, furnaces, air conditioners, and things like that in a you know critical load grid down situation for emergency backup home power. But I did, uh, I did kinda wanted to just show you this particular use case because it is something that interests me. And uh, once I get the rest of my solar uh, setup put up uh, further in the back, and then I get cables trenched all the way up here to the garage so I can start recharging these via solar, I'm gonna be able to basically run my EV 98, 99% of my daily use is gonna be off solar recharging alone, which is pretty cool to be able to do that. Now, if you're thinking about going and checking any of this stuff out, I will put links below to everything that we talked about. And I do know that Bluetti, by the way, has, uh, at least at the time of filming this, has some really aggressive sale pricing going on right now on the AC500 and at least one of these B300S modules. And I know they probably have a bunch of other package deals as, as well. But as I said, I'll leave links to all of that below if you wanna go check that out. Thanks for joining me for this video. Hopefully you found something helpful in the video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up on it. I'd very much appreciate that. And again, consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks for spending some time with me on this video. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.